The greatest promise the motor car makes is the promise of freedom, the ability to go where you want, when you want, as you wish. SUVs have always promised just a little bit more freedom than their hatchback or saloon counterparts. They can reach the parts other vehicles simply can't reach, even if the furthest most are driven off-road is a dropped curb. But what if you took your SUV at its word? What if you used it as it was intended? Covering the world, taking in some of the most dangerous countries and territories on offer. And what if, just to make things even more interesting, you decided to take this journey with somebody you didn't really know very well? That would be a bit of an adventure, wouldn't it? Bridget Thackeray and Toffa Richwhite decided to embark on such a journey on their second date. Just three months later, the New Zealanders had purchased a Wrangler and set off from Dead Horse, Alaska, the northernmost place in the Western Hemisphere accessible by road. Bridget and Toffa are now 53 countries and 90,000 miles, not to mention over 300,000 Instagram followers, into their round the world odyssey. We rented a Wrangler and followed the couple to Iceland to find out what it is that makes two people embark on such an expedition. Okay, so you guys decided to take this expedition, or the, the, the genesis of the, this expedition happened on your second date, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, second date in New Zealand, and we were driving around Mount Cook, so actually the coldest point in New Zealand. It was negative five, and we were having a picnic outside the car, and um, I don't think any, many other people would find that an interesting place to have a first day, but we loved it, and at that point in time, we realised that we were quite compatible. It was three months from the decision, to being inside Gunter, starting from Dead Horse in Alaska. And no cold feet at any point? No. Never. Never. <laughs> <laughs> I've got cold feet right now, but that's just <laughs> negative eight, eight degrees outside. The route went basically started in Alaska Dead Horse. It's 300 miles above the Arctic Circle. Wow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's down through Alaska, to the Rockies of Canada, through the centre parts, the Canyonlands of America, and then down from Mexico, I believe, Central America, into Colombia and then we went along the west coast of South America and a little bit up the east coast and shipped from Buenos Aires over to Africa and we actually went to Antarctica whilst Gunter shipped. Okay. So that was leg one. So this year we started in South Africa early February and went up, so it started west which is in Namibia and then cut across to Botswana and then through the east coast. What are you now, your 50 something countries in, 130,000 K? 53, yeah. countries 53 countries and 142,000 kilometres. And all that time in the one car? Yep. yep. No oh, breakdowns? No. no breakdowns? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. The couple are roughly two thirds of the way through their three year project called Expedition Earth and have driven through countries including Peru, Bolivia, and Chile in South America and Ethiopia, Botswana, and Sudan in Africa. Iceland, though requiring a detour across the sea, was always on their itinerary and it's impossible to disagree with that decision. The Icelandic landscape changes as frequently as the weather. One minute we're crossing heathland reminiscent of Scottish moors, the next we're driving across black volcanic lava fields. Moments later we're ascending a volcano, after which we hit Arctic highlands surrounded by snow-capped mountains. On the way to our overnight stop-off, we pass a landscape strewn with moss-covered rocks so alien they look as if they were from another planet. We see all these terrains in just one day. It's a truly breathtaking country. And so obviously we're in Iceland at the moment. Was that always on your hit list? Expedition Earth for us is about the, the journey more than just getting from A to B. So we want to see the different landscapes. We want to go off road and we want to see wilderness. And Iceland is one of the least populated countries. So we wanted to get you know on, through the rivers and through the mountains and through the lava fields. So it was always going to be on as part of Expedition Earth for us. And do you split the driving? But actually he does city driving and night driving. Okay. And then I will do normally just daytime. And then um, if actually, we... Even off road, Bridget does most of the driving. Because if we're off road, usually I've got the drone in the air. So I sit in the passenger seat with the remote control and um, Bridget would drive through all the rivers and up the landscapes. So. Choosing a Wrangler seems to have been the right decision for Expedition Earth, as their car, nicknamed Gunther after a fellow explorer, has not let them down once over the last two years. Equally as impressive, Bridget and Toffer themselves haven't had a single argument over the course of their travels, despite living in extremely close quarters and facing some seriously challenging conditions, including being held up at gunpoint in Ethiopia. We were driving through uh, Ethiopia down a pretty isolated road, and these guys and they looked suspicious from the get-go. It was a bit concerning but they held guns at our faces, well at our heads and 
made the movement of you know get out of the car and I, I basically was on my knees on the side of the road while Bridget was sat inside the car. It was the first time I'd seen fear in Bridget's eyes. Yeah, and then like a crowd gathered around Gontar and there were so many people watching that they just had to let us go at the end and people were yelling at them, so it was quite eye-opening for us. And why was it that you chose a Jeep? Why not, for example, I don't know, a Land Rover or a, La a Toyota Land Cruiser? So it was a mix for each of us. For me, it was definitely that the roof panels come off. <laughs> I loved that. And then so these panels here completely remove, remove and it's, it's totally convertible. So, which I believe, like when you're driving the planet, you want to have the smells and the sounds. Us, there's no point. You may as well just watch the screen. So it was really about being a part of the journey. And then for Topper, it was aftermarket parts. Really, wasn't it for you mainly? Aftermarket parts and the fact that, I mean, it's a very capable vehicle. And we made the decision when we went to a dealership and we realised that I could fit in the back. Oh, what, lying out. down for yeah because okay. i'm six foot five so lying head to toe i fit perfectly and it was the car was completely stock until you got to arizona is that right yeah that's right so in, in arizona we got bigger tires so we went from a 30 inch to a 33 inch we lifted the car two and a half inches and then we got uh these steel roof boxes made what would your message be for for people who were thinking of doing uh a trip of some kind, a, a long trip in a car, what sort of recommendations would you give? What were your learnings so far? A really good place to experiment is uh, in the canyon lands in Utah and Colorado, Nevada, anywhere near Las Vegas. There's some really good trails around there that you can get a good safe idea of what it's going to be like and whether or not you or your partner or family can actually handle each other on the road. Um, but it's a safe environment, some really great scenery. The philosophy of Expedition Earth what would it be? I think it's the personal challenge, the challenge for the vehicle, for any vehicle, um, and the adventure. The challenge and adventure, I think. Seeing the planet is a huge part of it. We've done the highest road in the world, which is in Bolivia, which is 6,000 something metres. The really lowest, oxygen. negative 127. We've, um, we've done the most dangerous of cliffs, the most dangerous of people. We saw a dead body on that one. South <laughs> Africa. South Africa, yeah. yeah. We may have only joined Bridget and Topper for a tiny sliver of their odyssey, but it was enough to get a taste of the experiences and challenges this sort of journey presents. The Wranglers didn't miss a beat throughout all this. They got us to places we never would have got to in another kind of vehicle, not in as much comfort anyway. And while SUVs may have morphed into front wheel drive shopping cars and crossovers these days, a trip like this just goes to show, sometimes there's no substitute for a proper off-roader.